What you're about to watch was from a recent online workshop that I did for a group of individuals that wanted to excel in their career. That meant they learned everything from entering flow states, the best diet for brain function, sleep optimization, nootropics, everything we could think of as jam-packed as much as possible in this hour. So it is a long one, but it is full of incredible value. So I hope you enjoy. Let me just ask you all a question. Do you know what the best legal performance enhancer is? Is it a certain supplement? Is it human growth hormone, HGH? Maybe it's a specific stack of nootropics. If you don't know what nootropics are, it's just basically focused supplements that improve your cognition. Well, here's the thing. It's, it's actually none of those, right? Because there's a new performance enhancer that scientists are calling the first true magic elixir. And that's because of its powerful effects. Now, the effects include improved memory, focus, energy, mood, strength, reduces abdominal fat, reduces stress, reduces all risk of diseases, and it's even anti-aging, right? It's pretty potent. Um, the best thing is as well, it's remarkably cheap to manufacture. Okay, guys, so it's pretty cool stuff that you're about to learn on this uh, PowerPoint. Now, whilst we're still studying its effects, it looks to be the next big thing in improving human performance and it's called sleep okay now before you switch off i know that's not sexy but i want to get this out of the way and kind of preface this whole workshop with this incredibly important point because what you're about to learn is going to be futile if you do not learn how to improve your sleep and before you say you get good sleep we're going to get to that in a moment and i'm going to prove you wrong why you don't actually get good sleep but look here's the real real kicker you just getting eight hours of sleep isn't enough in this day and age. And again, we will reveal to you near the end of this as to why. But look, I'm not here to persuade you to get to bed on time. You hear this enough. If anybody's read Matthew Walker's book on why we sleep, fantastic book, if you haven't read that already, we know that sleep is a big, big issue. And we know that sleep is, at least most of us do, know it's very, very important for overall cognition, cognition, memory, learning. When it comes to running a business, that is, you know, they're all essential faculty, essential faculties, right? So here's what we're going to do instead. This is the workshop. Our content today is divided into four parts. So number one is going to be about learning how to focus. So flow state focus, unlocking the secrets to laser like concentration, and you can boost your productivity. Then we'll move into workflow systems and setup. So how are you scheduling your day? How are you, you know, creating these websites and storing your tasks, your ideas, your thoughts, where do they go? What systems do you use for that? If you have any, maybe you don't. And then we're going to look at also your physical and digital environment as well, so that you can consistently achieve peak performance, which will allow you, you know, let's not be around the bush. It's going to allow you to make more money. If you can perform and operate at a, at a high level consistently, you're going to be able to work longer with burn without burning out. You're going to be able to perform on sales calls. You're going to be sharper with your words, right? So this is all a clear ROI. And the third part of this is going to be the nutrition for your brain function. So there's so much conflicting advice and bullshit out there, frankly, when it comes to nutrition, not even the experts can agree. So we're going to clear out a lot of that BS and get to actually what works and some real practical tips that you guys can go away and then perform better as a result. And then we will round it off with sleep optimization. So hopefully by then I would have convinced you to prioritize this after seeing that if you don't optimize your sleep and, and prioritize that, all of what you would learn in this will be futile, right? It only works if the foundation is solid and that is sleep. I know it's boring. I know it's not sexy, but we've been doing this for years now. And time and time again, if you want to get ahead, you need to sleep your way ahead, as paradoxical as that sounds. And then at the end, like I said, we'll have a quick Q&A and we'll get everyone's questions answered of any, any questions anyone has. Okay, sound good? Give me a thumbs up. Brilliant. Does that do that for me? I've been having this like AI thing on Zoom lately. I don't know if anyone's had that where it like puts an emoji when you thumbs up, it's not doing it now. But anyway, look, let's let's crack on with it. Let's start with focus, flow state. So here's the thing. You do not lack focus. So many people self-diagnose that they have ADHD. They can't focus. Their attention spans are completely fried. There's something wrong with them. They need to go on Adderall. I would say you don't lack focus, you lack solitude because the antithesis to 
focus is distraction. And we live in a hugely distracted world. Our phones, our notifications, our open space offices, um, relationships, you know, door open, everything. So to improve your focus, you must first improve your environment. And this means what I call your focus bubble, right? This bubble is going to protect you. It's going to shield you from all those distractions. And when you do that successfully, it becomes 10 times easier to enter what we call flow states. What the heck are flow states? Flow states are when your brain waves effectively shift from beta to alpha and time begins to dissolve and you are consumed with the task at hand. You might have had this firsthand experience whenever you're doing something creative right? Like drawing or playing an instrument, for example, or even website design, that can be a very flow inducing experience once you get into the, the rhythm of it, right? And you're not distracted, but it only happens in certain parameters. And Mihai Chitskin Mihai is the founding father of flow state, would you have it? So he's the guy who coined this term flow state, and there's actual triggers that you can utilize in your environment to help you get into that flow state. Now, imagine how much more work you could get done if you were able to tap into that flow state for two, three hours a day. But before we do this, we do need to set the foundations, otherwise it's not going to work. And it starts with your environment or your focus bubble. So here's how we do it. It's, it's twofold. It's a, it's a two-step process. First, your physical environment. We're going to do that, give you an audit for that. And then we're going to do your digital environment. Both of these need to be optimized. So step one, your physical environment. Some of these may be very obvious, but we need to, we need to take them, right? So... As much natural light as possible, avoid harsh, official, artificial light, let's just say harsh. So it's no good just having really harsh uh, fluorescent light in your office. You actually want ideally natural light. If you don't have that luxury, use diffused light because if you're using harsh light, it can strain your eyes. If your eyes are strained, you can, you can cause eye issues and you can also just cause headaches and you also can't just focus uh, enough or long enough as a result. So it's hindering your ability to focus and to work on these screens all day. So natural light is best. If you don't have that, um, I use diffused light. And so you just bounce it off the wall, just get some light and bounce it off the wall. And that's, that's diffused enough, right? You can also use a light bar as well for your monitor. So again, this is going to help with that diffused light and reduce that harshness, especially if you're working long in the evenings. Uh, a lot of our clients, I obviously sleep is number one, but at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, you have to work till 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Get this. This, put it with me right now, this is a timer. And if I had a penny for how many times people have asked me, where do I get this from? I probably have about 50p. But the point is, that will really, really help with what we call gamifying your ability to focus. So if you know, for example, that you only need to sit here for, say, 30 minutes, right? Just negotiate with yourself. 30 minutes, I'm going to design this website, right? Or plan this proposal. Then your brain likes that because it, the deadline becomes clear, right? And when you have clarity, you don't procrastinate. Procrastination stems from when things become difficult or unclear. So if you have a clear deadline, if you set yourself um, a time limit as well, you can also take advantage of what we call Parkinson's law, which time will basically fill up uh, to the amount of a task will take however long, however much time you allocate to that task, right? So if you take, say, oh, it's going to take two hours to do this task, it'll take two hours. But you might have found that when you have a deadline in place and you've only got 30 minutes, you somehow manage it, right? It's a bit scrappy, but you manage it. It's Parkinson's law taking effect right there. And so we can utilize that using that timer. Really good stuff. Get a plant. I like snake plants, low maintenance, help replace oxygen in the room. And again, we want that oxygen in the room for obvious reasons. Um, just keeping you alert, basically. Um, ventilated room, ideally. If you're in the UK, like a lot of you are, I assume, then it's pretty cold right now. So the next best thing is a five-stage air filter. Ton of pollutants in the air. In indoor air is incredibly toxic. You've got dust, irritants. These are low-level chronic stress on the body that can cause symptoms of um, stress itself. So you're not thinking as clearly, short-fused, um, and just general lack of focus from low irritants in the eye. So these things do add up. Stand up desk, if you haven't already, again, increased blood flow, um, posture, you don't want to be having like a crooked neck or anything like that. Um, again, tight hip flexors, all these things, you want blood flow. Invest in a good char, Herman Miller, um, really good char. I think you spend about 10, at least 10 years in your life if you're working an office based job. Um, so make sure, make sure it's worthwhile.
again, you want to really be incredibly comfortable here to the point that you can focus in on the task and not have to readjust uh, and make it nice as well. So I see sometimes our clients are, they work in the kitchen on a laptop, right? They're running a business from in the kitchen and that's cool that they can do that. But it's also very silly because <clears throat> you're handicapping yourself and you want to make it enjoyable, right? You want to make your work as enjoyable as possible. If you're behind your screen all day, invest in a good desk, invest in the chart, invest in making that your safe haven and then making your like, you know, your palace of solitude as nice as possible. It really does pay off. And make it minimal. So I always like to refer to this as uh, reducing operational complexity. So the more things you have in your peripheral vision, the more chaotic things are going to feel, the more your subconscious has to work to keep a mental note on where everything is. And so one tab, one monitor, ideally, if not you know, widescreen monitor or two, but no more than that, um, and no clutter anywhere. Make it minimal. It really does help with that clarity of mind. And again, we want that clarity to boost focus. Get a boring business phone. So I have like an old iPhone 4. Um, again, we're reducing distractions here. We're not tempted by addicting apps. I use this purely for business, WhatsApp, and that's that, right? So it can be with me in the office if someone needs me. Um, and my personal phone is downstairs, far away, turned off usually. So now step two, your digital environments. So we've done your physical environments, but the digital as well, a lot of people, people get caught out, right? Ton of distractions here. So what I like to do to help get me in that focus zone is to use binaural beats. We actually have this on the PowerPoint right now. If you can hear, hear that, um, download endo.io. This thing's really cool. If you have an O-ring, if you don't, that's fine. But if you do, this will actually sync to your O-ring and match the BPM of your heart rate. So effectively meeting you where you are in terms of your heart rate and help get you into the zone by um, playing different frequencies of, of sound waves in each ear. And this is really, really cool on, on Mac as well. So um, download and uh, IO, really, really good piece of um, software. Download to do this, more on this in a minute, but this is basically just a really, really good note-taking app with some really, really cool features. And this is specifically, um, this is this is very special because you can sync it very, 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 very cleverly to your phone. That I'll, I'll go into a moment. I don't want to spoil that, but just download this and thank me later. Clutter-free in terms of your desktop, in, terms, in case it's not obvious. No, no folders open. Again, we want to reduce that uh, operational complexity. You don't want to have to think. You don't want to feel overwhelmed. Just simple stuff like that. No notifications. Again, I know it's obvious, but sometimes people just don't do it. Turn them off. Download focused YouTube. This is a lot of people's kryptonite. I love YouTube. I'm always learning. Um, but it's very, very good at stealing your attention, right? All these catchy thumbnails, these titles, and you just want to click it to find out, you know, the curiosity. See, there you go. There's that. There's the AI thing with a thumbnail. Thumb. Anyway, um, download that. Awesome, awesome thing. What it will do is basically just set YouTube as a search bar. So you can still use it, but you're not going to be reeled in with all these addictive videos. So you can use it with its intent um, and not throw away your time. Really, really good one. Download rise.io as well. So if you're someone who really likes to keep track of like, where the heck is my time going throughout the day? I just don't know where it goes. And maybe you're someone that gets distracted to another task and you realize, hang on a minute, why am I creating a logo? I said I was going to create this website or whatever it is, right? That's a good way. And this is how we keep clients accountable is where, where the heck is your time going? So you can see here, total time, seven hours, 51. And you can have a breakdown of where that's going. Now, you don't have to download all these apps. I know this is a lot of apps I'm throwing at you, but it's just something to know and something for you to trial with yourself. These ones are a game changer. But, so we know phone is a massive issue. I can't cover all of it in this video for time uh, time purposes, but if you must go on your phone, at least put some friction points. So download opal.io, or I think that's opal.so. Okay, that should be, sorry. And then combine that with one sec. So what one sec will do is just broaden the gap between stimuli and response. So the stimuli is your phone is next to you on the sofa. Um, and the response is, I'm going to check my notifications on Instagram, right? And validate myself with all those likes and, and DMs. What that will do, one sec, is just say to you, are you sure you want to do this right now? Right? And that will broaden that gap between the stimuli response and you can say, hang on a minute, I'm getting distracted, right? That mindfulness is coming back. We need to retrain ourselves. And these are tools to combat the constant battle of our attention spans. So now you should have a pretty solid focus bubble, right? I know I've told you to download a bunch of things. Are. And again, if a lot of this is going over your head, 
we will have a PDF later and then and, uh, on the following days to just bullet point everything that's gone in here. But what you're looking at here is just an accumulation of years of um, coaching and experience and will down into hopefully an hour. So you've got your coach, you've got your focus bubble, but you must leave this bubble in order to sustain peak focus throughout your day. Why? Because of something called allostatic load. Now, this basically means that whenever you are working here, you have your stress levels on the bottom, on the left, you have your performance. As you go out throughout your task, right, your stress levels in the background will naturally begin to increase. So your brain and body are constantly using enzymes, amino acids, all of these kinds of resources to focus, right? And so even though you're not physically exercising, you're still using up energy, you're still using up these amino acids and electrolytes. And so what's going to happen is if you push yourself past this optimum point here, which typically is around 45 minutes to an hour after that, you're going to start going into the exhaustion phase. And what a lot of people do is they fight against the tide and they keep pushing around here, right? They go on for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours. And what you really need to do is go and take a proper break. And I don't mean go and scroll on your phone. I mean, go for a walk. I would say that's the best thing we do with clients. Just go for a little 10, 15 minute walk outside. You'll feel, you'll feel back here. You'll feel, you'll feel ready to go again, right? Um, and this was a, uh, a term coined by Bruce McEwen and Elliot Stella, if you want to learn more about this again. Uh, we are just touching upon, upon you know pretty complex topics, but these are good things to know in terms of why you feel like you can't focus. You actually need to rest. Being lazy is productive, right? And that's one of the most difficult things we find uh, with people who work behind the desk is they feel like they need to be on the laptop all the time. It's not true, right? So look, you 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 know how to get to work. You You know when to rest, but how do you use all this so you can get more done in less time. That's what we all want to do, right? That's the um, that's the key. That's you know, that's the ideal productivity. You're doing more in less time. Well, you need a tried and tested workflow system, right? And we're going to give you that right now. And this is where the GTD method comes in. Has anybody heard of the GTD method? No, nope. that's fine. That's good. So, what is the GTD method? This was some. This was a, a productivity system created by Dave Allen. He's a productivity consultant and author. He's got a fantastic book. Read this. Read this specific one with the green writing because it concises it down. You don't need to go and read the extensive book. Read that book. You can literally read it in a day. It's so easy. And it will. What I'm trying to explain to you here, it will explain it much more. You know, in granular detail, so that you can deeply understand this and actually understand the power of it. But he said that your mind, and I like this, your mind is for having ideas, not holding them. And, and this is what the GTD method looks like. So step one is capture. You need to continuously write everything down on your mind. Every idea, every thought, every task, you need to offload it. Remember what he's just said. Your mind is not for having ideas. Sorry, your mind is not for having, uh, is not for having ideas. Um, your mind is for having ideas, it's not for storing them. I absolutely butchered that, sorry. But you get my gist, right? So look, step one, capture, write everything down. Now, what we'll do in a moment, I'm not saying to you to go and get a physical to-do list because that's not very realistic in this digital day and age, but just bear with me because we're going to do something pretty cool. And step two is to clarify. So it's not just enough to jot things down. A lot of people know that. Oh, I'll write to-do list, right? But you need to be clarifying these things. You need to process all the tasks on your list by determining what to do with them. Okay. Now I can show you how to clarify later, but you basically want to use something called the Heisenhower matrix. So that's just do, delegate, important, not important, right? You can learn more about this in the book. Like I'm not going to draw on about it. I just want to expose you to these ideas that you can fast track yourself and, and learn these things. The first step is then to organize. When does it need to be done, right? Book that into your calendar and we're, and we're showing them in just a moment how that works. And lastly, you need to reflect continuously. So this is what trips a lot of people up. They write out the to-do list. They do it for the week. They do it for the day, but they don't reflect. And this is so crucial because your schedule changes. People book in calls, meetings, um, different tasks pop up. And so you need to reflect and you need to constantly, not constantly, but you need to be occasionally uh, looking at your to-do list and be like, hey, is this, is this relevant now, right? And that's where you stay on top of it. And that's how you prevent overwhelm because overwhelm just stems from disorganization. And if you're overwhelmed, you're not able to focus again. You're not able to attack the day as you'd like. So I like to reflect, and this is probably not the best way to do it, but it's very time efficient. I like to reflect in the gym between sets, right? So I actually have to do this on my phone and I'll reflect. Um, and I generally find that because of the increased blood flow to my brain and BDNF, brain-derived nootropic factor that exercise gives us, 
it helps me form new ideas and and connects dots differently. And so I have a lot of good ideas in between sets in the gym. And so just constantly offloading that and what I'm doing that I'm reflecting, but I'm also capturing, right? And that way, no task, no idea ever slips under under the proverbial rug. So here's what we here's where we like supercharge it. You've got the GTD method, and I want you to apply it within Todoist. Now you don't obviously you don't know what Todoist is. We use Todoist really because of its natural language recognition system. So what this means for you is you can add tasks lightning quick anywhere, right? So in the gym, you have a quick idea. Oh, I need to chase up that client tomorrow at 8 p.m., right? And it will organize at 8 p.m. in your calendar uh, for tomorrow like that, right? You see the way it's highlighted that every day. So what that will do is we'll set it as a reoccurring task. So you can just set and forget tasks that are always reoccurring every day. Like maybe it's prospecting or something, right? Just, re just you know, reset it to reoccur every day and i can't really show you too much on, on to do this because that's just a wrap hole in of itself but just download it apply the gtd method these things that you're learning right now you will not get it straight away but if you commit to this for like at least two weeks it'll change the way you run your business and what's really cool about todoist i like this one it schedules with your calendar so in the pink the key here is pink it's scheduled calls here right or, or deep work tasks whatever what that will do is you can set it up so that if you set up your Calendly, like I don't know if you guys take calls like I do on Calendly, but clients can't book in calls at these points once I've, if I put in deep work for my to-do list or calls or whatever, whatever else it is, right? Basically, you won't, you don't, ideally, you don't really want to be taking calls in the morning, ideally, right? Um, and so it, you want to automate this process and Todoist does that for you by, if you've got an important task in the morning, but then someone books a call at 10 a.m. Well, now you're going to have to deflect that task for later in the day and just messes everything up. And so by using Todoist, it will just automatically schedule that out, right? So now you want to hack your neurology by using all these systems together in this seven-step workflow process. So here it is. Plan your day the night before. Okay, it's pretty basic stuff. Wow, fascinating, right? But it's, 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 the, it's the simple stuff that really does work here. Um, Again, you want to wake up and just know exactly what you need to do. And you want to plan your day within Todoist. I wish I could show you how to do all that, but that would literally take me 15 minutes extra to do that. Um, we do have a YouTube video on, on Todoist as well, if you guys want to watch deeper into that. But Todoist is awesome. Set no more than three high-priority tasks for the day. I like to categorize this as red within Todoist. So you can color them as red, set them as priority. Red is the highest priority. And the reason, and you've got to be ruthless with this as well, because everyone thinks that the... They want to get like 10 things done a day. And like, what happens is you just don't really, you maybe get one of those things done or two things. And then you feel, you feel terrible. You feel like you're not getting enough done, but you're just not being ruthless enough with how you prioritize. And if you're getting three main tasks done throughout the day, that's really, really good day. That's a very, very good day, right? Now you need to have your tasks clarified and broken down into smaller steps. And this is so important when it comes to procrastination and difficult big projects, because let me ask you this. If we painted out the road to you, brick by brick and it was so simple to take that next step regardless of the project if you're launching i don't know an eight-figure offer whatever it is doesn't matter how big or monumental the task is if you could map out the uh, the steps uh, step by step you'd be able to complete it eventually follow that principle when it comes to getting tasks done whenever you're procrastinating on them and you find it difficult just keep breaking it down into the next logical step and just start with that next step put one foot in front of the other um that's a great way to, to beat procrastination in that sense. And eat the frog. So begin your hardest task fast as soon as you can. Some people actually fare better with doing a creative task fast. And that kind of momentum of that dopaminergic response of completing a task can carry you on to that difficult task next. next. So sometimes it could be like, um, I don't know, something creative, or maybe it's a task that you quite enjoy doing. Everybody has them within the business. And then you can carry that momentum onto the difficult task, right? So it's not always binary thinking of always always eat the eat the frog sometimes doing that creative task can help give you that momentum for the day and set a timer for 30 60 minutes right so again like i said kind of repeating myself but have a deadline don't just say i'm going to work on this task all day or for three hours be realistic uh, use parkinson's law try and crunch it down and do less with more and again like we mentioned re removing that allostatic load on our brain and body so go for a short walk and repeat two three times a day literally even just five minutes just get outside right it'll really help reset you and revitalize you for the next at least hour or two of work 
you want to think of going about your day as a round of sprints, not a marathon. And everybody just thinks of it as a marathon. And it's just three coffees down, ton of stimulants, you know, eating multiple protein bars throughout the day, <coughs> Sam. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it's not sustainable. It will work for a little while, but then they get burnt out and then they're going to take an extra day or two of rest or, you know, they're uninspired by the work. So you got to think of it as a round of sprints. Use endle.io, help engage your brain with those binaural beats. Use it as a flow trigger. That's one of those flow triggers is binaural beats. Take breaks. And that's a seven step process. Now, look, you know how to create your focus bubble. You now know how to consistently get things done. But what about the fuel you give to your brain? Well, you need the right nutrition for brain function. Now, let me start off by saying most people eat like shit. And I use some AI generator here to create a man eating a bowl of shit. And I don't think this is too far from the truth, to be honest. Um, I can't help but judge people's shopping baskets and, you know, they complain about low energy. I guess ignorance is, is bliss kind of thing and they don't know any different, but it really is just a ton of bad products going around in terms of additives, um, macronutrient profile. So they are marketed very well. There's like a high protein, high fiber snack. But the general rule of thumb is whole food diet is best. So stop eating cereal in the mornings. You're not a kid. I don't know why people still do this. Um, there's something much better to eat in the morning. Stop being scared of dietary fat. You see so many low fat products. I tried to get some cottage cheese the other day and I couldn't even get a normal one. Like it's all just low fat. And I'll get into the moment like why this is a huge issue when it comes to energy and focus. Because here's the reality. Your brain and your body actually love dietary fat, right? Don't believe the market employees that they started in the 80s. Uh, your brain is mostly fat itself. Dietary fat is essential for hormone function. So things like testosterone, and the same goes for women as well. Like you need testosterone. Testosterone is not just about making you aggressive. It actually gives you motivation. It makes efforts feel good, right? Which is why it's so, so important to have that hormone functioning properly is because if you're not, if you're not testosterone optimized and you have a good balance of your testosterone, estrogen, pedestrian, then you're going to wake up and you're just not, you're going to be very brittle, right? Things get you down easily. This is why a lot of men have like anxiety and depression issues because their testosterone is terrible because of endocrine disruptors in our food, plastics or BPAs, it's, it's everywhere. Well, that's a topic for another time. Uh, crucially here, dietary fat is incredibly satiating. So people see low fat and think, oh, low fat, less calories, boom, that's a hack, I'll get leaner. But what 15 years of experience gives you in the health industry and doing this yourself of being skinny, of being fat, of being everything, um, it doesn't satiate you. And so you actually end up eating more in the long run to try and satiate your appetite. So yes, on paper, fat has more calories, right? Nine calories per gram, okay? Compared to protein and carb, which is four, right? Um, but it keeps you fuller, right? It keeps you fuller for longer. And so in the long run, you actually end up eating less. But that's not the point of this. And um, the point of dietary fat here and why I'm making it in this workshop is it's extremely effective for keeping your blood sugar stable. Why should you care about blood sugar stability? What does that have to do with your work? So a stable blood sugar equals stable energy, right? That's one of the main keys to having consistent energy throughout the day. And because most people eat like shit and they have a croissant for breakfast or cereal, it's going to spike your blood sugar, drop you, and then you have to rely on coffee, like five cups of coffee, and then you ruin your sleep. And then because coffee still affects you on a on a neurological level, even though you can't feel it, you're getting terrible sleep, right? So it's, so it's a downward negative spiral. So stable energy means more work gets done. More work that gets done means more money for you, right? So energy is really, really important here. But where do you begin? We use data. We're a big fan on data with clients. We don't like subjective feelings. Humans are notoriously biased. We've got cognitive biases, right? We will defend our beliefs till our death. So we use data. And you can measure your energy. And this is this is pretty good technology um, using a CGM or continuous glucose monitor. You can get things from from like levels. I think levels are now operating in the UK. I believe they're a US brand. But basically, it will monitor your glucose levels, your blood sugar levels throughout the day, as you can see through this graph. And you can see that respond to even quote unquote healthy meals as well, right? So everybody's different. Um, one of the best things to do is, is to have a high fat breakfast, which I'll show in a moment what I have and what we recommend to most of our clients. But you don't have to do this forever, by the way, guys, as well. Just do this for a month, right? Just order one for a month. I think like 100 pounds. And you've got that data forever. And then you truly understand and have bespoke knowledge to you and what meals agree with you. And you might be having breakfast. You whack one of these on. You're like, I've been having that quote-unquote healthy breakfast of, I don't know, oats. There's an AI thing. 
oats, oats and uh, oats, banana, right? And blueberries, but it spikes the shit out of your blood sugar to put it bluntly, right? And so data empowers you to make those changes. Now, we always have a few rules here that we apply straight away to give them a stable blood sugar. I call this the three plus two rule. So three big meals and two snacks. So remember, every time you eat, you you raise your blood sugar. Um, you want to do that periodically throughout the day. So think of it like a nice little roller coaster. So three big meals, two snacks. Those meals should consist of a carb, fat, and protein in every main meal. Sometimes I see clients having um, like no rice, for example, because they're carb phobic. I understand why, like there's a bunch of keto zealots and again, conflicting information on nutrition. But if you're having this, if you're having rice, for example, with a healthy fat source of avocado um, and then with some beef mints, right? Grass fed beef mints, that's that they're, they're going to have a, they're going to work synergistically. Think of it like that in your body when it's digested. And so that's going to help control your blood sugar. So what will spike your blood sugar is basically processed foods or having things like carbohydrates by themselves or even protein by itself is, uh, it raises your insulin. So the best thing to do is have a combination of three, try and get to the habit of doing that. And then another good one to compound all these with is just go for a short walk or just kind of movement before and or after each meal. Again, it doesn't have to be long, but I like to compound my lunch um, with a nice little break of a walk, right? And you can just do that throughout the day. Not all the time, but generally, you know, it's never a bad idea to compound your meal with a walk. And if you're stressed, well, good luck, because look at what happens to your glucose levels on a day uh, of a high of high stress compared to a normal day. And stress, as we know, um, if you're not recovering properly with sleep, more on this on how to tackle this later, but very, very important to be to be tracking your glucose, especially if you're stressed. So look, fat is your friend, opt for a high fat breakfast with a portion of omega threes, avocado, walnuts, chia seeds to boost cognitive function. Just give this a go for seven days. Try this high fat smoothie. So it's quick. It's easy. You don't have to think. Grab yourself some chia seeds, one banana, half an avocado or a whole avocado if you like, blueberries, raspberries, and grass fed soy free protein powder. Just try that. Okay. For seven days in the morning, then start your day and just see how you feel. Okay. And that leads us on to the question 98% of people struggle to answer. What should you actually eat? It's carnivore. It's keto, it's animal based, it's nothing. People, you know, hail fasting now. Nutrition is incredibly conflicting, and not even the experts can agree. You have one group of experts shouting about fiber, you have another one shouting about meat, and then another one shouts about fasting and just having a black coffee in the morning. And yeah, you'll feel focused, but I'm sure you will. You're running on adrenaline and norepinephrine, right? But too much of anything is not good. And I won't get into it for reasons in this video, but what is the best diet for you? So what's going to boost your brain function to optimal levels and keep it that? The answer is actually none of the above. Because here's the truth. You actually have a second brain within your body. Turns out there are brain cells in the gut. And there's about 100 million of them. So you can see a neuron network here. Um, this was taken from mice and, and humans. And you can see that they're, they're interwoven within the, the lining of your gut wall. So incredibly complex and, and difficult to detect, which is why it's only just uh, quite a recent discovery. Uh, and this complex network of neurons is often referred to as a second brain. And this is theorized that this is why you might perhaps get that butterfly feeling in your stomach or that gut feeling. Uh, and this is why we should focus our efforts if we want to improve our brain performance. Or this is why we should focus our efforts, I should say. So a healthy gut, healthy brain. Because many of the foods that are good for your brain are also good for your gut, vice versa. And two, if your gut isn't performing, if you have things like leaky gut or just general inflammation down there, um, which can which can symptomize as um, excessive belching, gassiness, and you can be sure that you probably have symptoms of brain fog as well. So usually we find clients who who complain about brain fog if it's not sleep with sleep related, it's usually gut related slash nutrition. Okay, so if your gut isn't performing, your brain will follow. But how do you take care of your second brain or your gut? You need to look after the hundred trillion micro microorganisms that live in your gut. So that means you are made up of 10% human cells and 90% microbes, aka bacteria, right? And yet we live in the most clinically clean bacteria killing environment with soaps, surface cleaner, bacteria killer, um, hand wash, right? And what we really need to understand is these little guys aren't going anywhere, right? They're everywhere. And this is a, this is a symbiotic relationship. So it's not about eradicating bacteria. Obviously there are bad bacteria and we want to control that. 
but it's about having a strong enough immune system to live symbiotically with this bacteria. And it's proposed that's why babies instinctively put objects in their mouths from a young age to diversify their gut bacteria and strengthen their immune system, right? If you don't use it, you lose it. So quickly, how microbes work on your body. They send, they go up to other microbes and they send little metabolites called quorum sensing. And they basically say, okay, you're one of us. You're not one of us. Um, and what can happen is if you have an overgrowth of bad bacteria, you can cause um, genetic genes, certain genes to switch on and off, right? Once uh, a certain growth occurs in a typical, in a, in a type of um, gut bacteria or reaches a critical mass. So we have a symbiotic relationship which just basically means if we feed these guys certain things, they'll look after us. So for example, resistant starch, which is found in bananas, causes microbes to release a chemical in our gut that helps reduce inflammation, right? So how do you look after your gut? Again, this is simplifying a pretty complex topic and we still don't understand fully, but probiotic foods are a good place to start. So yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, right? So probiotic foods very quickly, they already contain live cultured bacteria, which are beneficial to your gut. They can help support a healthy gut microbiome. And then you've got your pre pre prebi prebiotic, sorry. So prebiotics are foods rich in fibers that serve as food for the beneficial bacteria. So garlic, onions, bananas, asparagus, apples, particularly the skin, which contains uh, pectin, a type of prebiotic fiber. Now containing, uh, combining, sorry, both of these creates a beneficial synergy between the live bacteria and the fibers, right? That the bacteria feed on. Make sense so far? Cool. So look, people love supplements, right? And here's some brain boosting supplements and here's my personal favorite. We're just gonna, we're just gonna bullet point these real quick now. So L-theanine with caffeine. So caffeine is the most widely, widely used drug. Um, Better way to take it though. Wait at least two hours upon awakening to, to your identity system, your energy system gets online. Instead, have a small glass of um, water with some salt, just a little bit of pink salt will do. Well, that will help hydrate you more with the electrolytes. And so the caffeine will have a, a, a better effect on a hydrated brain. Um, take it with L-theanine as well. So you can just take it with 200 milligrams, super, super cheap supplement to get from bulk powders. This will basically help curb those caffeine jitters that you can get if you have too much caffeine, right? It can cause anxiety, right? So take that well, L-theanine, and it can help soothe that caffeine crash as well that you can sometimes get at 3 p.m. So L-theanine is an awesome, awesome supplement. It's also good to take in the evenings anyway by itself to help calm your nervous system, help you for a good night's sleep. Magnesium L-3 and 8. So this can actually pass the blood-brain barrier, and this can help with muscle relaxation. It can help with, it has a bunch of um, neuroprotective effects, so supports memory, cognitive function, Really, really good. And majority of the population are deficient in magnesium, right? Due to the modern agriculture, the way we uh, farm with our soils are depleted of nutrients. So everybody should be supplementing with magnesium, either magnesium glycinate or L3 and 8. L-tyrosine and amino acids. So this is really good if you're someone that likes to work out. Everybody should be exercising anyway. And sometimes if you've worked out, you go to, you go to work, sit down on your desk. I don't know about you, but I find it, if I'm not taking the supplement, or if I had a really, really hard leg session or something, I find it difficult to focus. And that's because um, L-tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine and that can help you focus, that can help you keep you motivated. And if you've used up these amino acids, it's difficult to get yourself motivated. So you want to replenish these with, in the form of a, a supplement, which can be beneficial. Lion's Mane, very, very popular right now. Um, mood Enhancer, promising research on, on cognitive function as well. Methylene Blue, this is actually a synthetic uh, supplement. Um, it's actually a dye that was created in the 1870s by, I believe, a German chemist. Um, but it's got some awesome, awesome, promising research. And it's it's really, really good for overall um, cell function. So what it basically does is it helps improve your mitochondria uh, and the way they function. I won't get into the science of the um, electron chain or anything like that. But basically, if you take this, it can help with things like energy, clarity, brain fog, and mood. And creating monohydrate, people think of this as a bodybuilding supplement. Um, it's actually got some cognitive benefits as well, which is to do with memory. Um, and that's like the world's most uh, studied supplement as well. I've got 10,000 studies, something ridiculous. So all that you've just learned will be futile unless you focus on this. And now let's finish with what we've started. And that's sleep optimization. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from this workshop, let it be this section. 
here's the reality of things. Fuck COVID. We're in a silent sleep loss epidemic. Okay. And if you don't take this seriously, no nootropic, biohack, or brute effort will save you. You will eventually pay for it. And the guy who takes his sleep seriously will wipe the floor with you in the long run. So let me just stop you there as well. I know maybe some of you think I already sleep good, right? But let me tell you, you most likely don't. The amount of clients we take on, they self-report, and they are adamant that they sleep well. We get an aura ring on them or a whoop band, and then they're getting 70s, like 70 out of 100 or 75%, right? You should be at least getting 85 consistently if you've got everything dialed in, ideally. Obviously, there's going to be nights where you know, you're traveling and stuff. That's fine. But when you're in routine, you should be, you should be locked in, especially if you want to be pushing things in your business. So I always just say, well, show me your data. If you sleep well, show me the data, data over feelings. And you can do this by investing in an aura ring or whoop man. I'm biased to an aura ring because I just like the form factor of a ring. Um, if you're more of a fitness person, whoop band is, is superior. Um, but just do this even just for six months. Right? You don't have to wear it for the rest of your life. Right. But just for six months, just get that invaluable data about your own self. And uh, from there, you've got a solid foundation to start building some good, good sleeping habits that are individual to you. So the main variable you want to improve if you do get an O-ring here is restlessness um, or restfulness as it's, it's seen here. But what that means is when you're moving throughout the night or how many times you wake up. And it's so, so common for people to wake up throughout the night. And it is actually normal to wake up throughout the night because you go through different stages of sleep. But it's not very normal to be waking up for, say, longer than five minutes, 10 minutes, right? And not being able to get back to sleep. Very, very common problem. Why does this happen? Well, look, before I tell you that, you need to know this 10-second lesson on sleep. I'll try and be as quick as I can. So you have five stages of sleep that happen uh, that you cycle through every 90 minutes, several times throughout the night. Each stage serves its own invaluable purpose. So it starts with light sleep, going to a bit of a light sleep. Uh, that's stage two. Then stage three is deep sleep. So this is associated with the recovery of your body. So your muscles, all that stuff. Then stage four is REM sleep. That's when you're dreaming. And this is associated with the consolidation of learning memory is very, very important um, for your cognitive performance the next day. And then it repeats like five to seven times that night, depending on the quantity of sleep, right? All stages are invaluable, but REM sleep is what you want to focus on. Why? Most people get poor REM sleep. Um, like we said, it's responsible for learning, consolidation of memory. And it takes place in the third trimester of sleep. So typically around like the six hour, six to eight hour mark, five to eight hour mark, should we say. But what happens to most people is they're getting like six hours, seven hours of broken sleep, right? So what is effectively happening here is you're castrating yourself from all the benefits of REM sleep. So you're waking up, you're not storing as much um, learned information from yesterday. And you're just making things a lot more difficult for yourself by not prioritizing proper REM sleep. So how can we improve it, right? Again, pretty complex issue but I've tried to whittle it down into key practical points here. There's that supplement again, magnesium 3 and 8. It will help relax your body. It will help you get primed for sleep. Put your room as cool as possible if you want a rough number 16 degrees, um, although it's different for everyone, but generally the cooler, the better, right? Um, I use something called an 8-Pod Pro that regulates the temperature of your mattress, um, but you don't have to do that. You could even have just have your windows cracked open um, and then use a, a white noise box if there's noise outside to, to balance that out. Uh, red light your your home so downstairs right now in, in my home the lights are all red so the reason why we have the home red is because that helps facilitate the most amount of melatonin melatonin helps you fall asleep helps you stay asleep and so at around 7 8 p.m we can you can actually program them by investing in some philips uh, light bulbs and you can program them to go in at 7 8 p.m every every time so your home will look like the red light red light district in amsterdam but they're actually really really cool um then Carb heavy meal, three hours before bed. So carbs are great. I don't know why they, well, I do know why I get a bad rep, but stop demonizing carbs, right? It's, it's, it's the quality of the carb. It's the type of carb. If you're having, um, say you're having dinner at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., right? And you go to bed at 10 p.m. That's absolutely fine. And I would actually encourage you to, to bulk up on the rice, on the potatoes, because that's actually going to help um, release something called serotonin. It's going to help you feel relaxed. It's going to help you feel chilled out, sleepy, and not have anxiety around bed or racing mind. So a carb-heavy meal can really help three hours before bed. Don't have it too close before bed because also then you run into the issue of the thermic effect of food, which basically means that it heats up your body. That's the antithesis to getting a good night's sleep is heat. So avoid that. But yeah, three hours before bed, good carb-heavy dinner. Um, outside within the first hour upon waking to start syncing your circadian rhythm. Um, if you guys have listened to anything like Andrew Huberman, he's a big, big um, advocate of this. Put your phone downstairs. Again, obvious stuff, but so many people are bad for this. Um, 
yeah, I, I put it plainly, just put your phone down, stars. The more you get into the habit of going on your phone in bed, the difficult it's going to be to quit that thing. Because as soon as you hop into bed, you associate your bed with scrolling, with a dopaminergic behavior that can actually raise your heart rate a little bit. And that's why people can give themselves insomnia because they're just like, oh, I need to be watching TV. I need to be doing something to drift off. Terrible, terrible habit. It can be broken. That's what we help with. Um, all bedroom plugs switched off. So EMF, electromagnetic fields, they're emitted everywhere. Can't really get away from them. Wi-Fi, um, you can reduce it. Just turn off your plugs. They also emit that. So just moving a headboard like 12 inches away from your wall can help reduce EMF exposure. That has shown at least at least like a 10, 12% in some of our clients' um, sleep data, uh, an improvement in that 10, 12% just from that alone. Uh, also, fun fact with EMF, um, it can deplete you of melatonin. So it's like a double whammy. So if you've got your phone in bed, the blue light from the screen is going to inhibit melatonin, but also EMF depletes you of melatonin, right? Because melatonin is neuroprotective. So it's like a negative double whammy, your phone in bed. It's really fucking you up, to put it bluntly. Um, our purifier again. So for reasons mentioned, we want to avoid those irritants on our lungs, on our nose. We don't want to become mouth breathers whilst we sleep. Sometimes that can happen. Um, so you can have issue, very common issues to have mold. It doesn't even need to be uh, visible. Um, this can cause things like um, personality changes, mood swings, brain fog. Uh, mold's actually a really, really big issue, uh, especially if your room is, is, very, is very humid and there's a lot of moisture in the air. So up your fire again can go a long way throughout the night because you're breathing in that room all night, right? You might wake up and the room feels kind of um, smoggy. You know, it's got kind of smell to it, like people have been sleeping. It's not nice. So use an up your fire um, if you can't open your window because I know sometimes if you open your window too much, uh, you'll get this, you'll get woken up by noise. And if you're a light sleeper like me, that's terrible. So look, quick, quick few pointers here, finishing off. If you need to pee in the middle of the night, because again, we want to reduce that restlessness because that's going to help improve our sleep, which will help improve our focus. Opt for a piece of fruit instead or a small glass of pink salt, right? So the salt will actually hydrate you more. Um, and because you're not need, need to drink, needing to drink as much water to quench your thirst, um, you won't need to hopefully go to the toilet. That works. Such a treat with clients. Uh, another quick one. If you want to wake up without feeling groggy, so many people have this. Again, there's a lot more that goes into it than this, but effectively, you just want to be waking up the end of your sleep cycles. So remember, they happen in 90-minute intervals. If, if you wake up in the middle of that, you'll feel like shit, basically. And this is why if you go for a power nap and you nap longer than 20 minutes or 90 minutes, um, you can feel really groggy. You often feel worse. So you know, nap at your own peril. Um, use this instead when you go to bed. Sleepy time. Um, dot cc. Right, they're bringing out an app. It's pretty damn cool. So, you know, we're all human. Bedtimes do alternate. I always give people a realistic variable of one one hour leniency. So, if you go to bed at 10 p.m., don't go any later than 11 p.m. Shouldn't mess up your circadian rhythm too much. Shouldn't feel too too groggy because uh, a fluctuating circadian rhythm, like fluctuating bedtimes and wake up times, is just terrible for you, for your energy and your routine. So. If you can get into a routine and if you want to know the best time for you to wake up at the end of your sleep cycle, just use this to work it out. It's really, really cool. So I have to wake up at what? 6 a.m. Okay. Calculate sleep now. And it will tell you to go to bed at like half nine or whatever it is, depending on, it will give you several points to wake up to, which will end your sleep cycle accordingly. So it's really good. And that was that. That was the Goldilocks workshop brain boosting blueprint. Thank you, Sam. Round of applause. Thank you guys. Thumbs up. So if you want to learn more, what we do at Goldilocks, goldilocks.zone. You can follow me on Instagram, Alex Demerol. Um, Like I said, we'll be a PDF of everything we've covered because I'm sure you guys are like, what the hell, that was so much. But look, I just want to expose you to these ideas and start to you know go away and ruminate on them and try and implement some of the things we've mentioned. Again, uh, the PDF will have links for stuff that we've mentioned, like the supplements, all that stuff. 